My Hero Academia started off in the best way possible. The first two episodes for season seven came out, I saw them on Crunchyroll, and they just immediately broke my brain at how they mastered the art of the buildup. We've seen it before in season three with Stain and everything that happened with Redestro later on in the storyline. But with this, they're essentially setting up the expectations for what we're going to see power-wise between Shigaraki as he is officially set up to fight the most important hero in the story at this point, Star and Stripe. Not only is she the number one hero in the United States, she has one of the most powerful quirks in the entire universe, the New Order quirk. All for One is hell-bent on capturing her quirk because it has endless possibilities in terms of adaptations. New Order allows Star and Stripe to manipulate reality at a molecular level based on spoken commands. So basically she says something during the battle and she can control the outcome of the entire environment that she's surrounded with. Thankfully, just like in the manga, this battle between Star and Stripe and Shigaraki is super intense and really detailed. They give us a backstory into Star and Stripe, how she got her powers and what the nature of the New Order quirk is. And they also took that opportunity to give us an answer into the most important question from this scenario. Why does All For One want the New Age quirk? Essentially, by using New Order, Star and Stripe basically sets rules to alter reality, which she wants to use in combat in order to directly combat Shigaraki's DK quirk. Because once he touches her, that's a one-shot kill, GG's. If we want to get technical, the quirk allows her to manipulate the physical properties out of everything that she comes in contact with, whether it be the environment, a person, herself, or even quirks. For example, if she says her name out loud, she can manipulate and increase her physical strength, make inanimate objects appear out of the air, or even take control over gravity itself. Or, like we see in the episode in the coolest way possible, she can take laser beams and manipulate them out of thin air. But the quirk does have some limitations. It can't directly end your life just by simply saying your name. So no, it's not like the Death Note. You basically have to be fully touching somebody in order to set the new rule, and there is a maximum of two rules that can be applied at one time. So once you have a new rule that you want to introduce into the mix, you have to displace one of the previous ones that you already had activated. Por razones obvias, mi pana, este quirk is super overpowered. And of course, All For One as a villain knows this, and his primary motive for acquiring this quirk through Shigaraki is that the potential is limitless. He can have unlimited control over reality. This is like giving a 12-year-old the ray gun in Call of Duty. It is um, immediate chaos. Think about it just for a second. If New Order allows you to rewrite rules that could theoretically stop another person from using their quirk or eliminating it completely, you would overcome every single setback to world domination. And going even further beyond in terms of the madness that this could cause, using the quirk would allow him to overcome all of the limitations that his existing quirks already have, even if the quirk inherently has weaknesses built in. So yeah, we don't want him to get this, like, at all. It would suck. Which is why the ending of the second episode hit me so damn hard in the feels. We saw how Shigaraki was able to use a Nomu to overthrow every single attack that Star and Stripe sent his way. Not only that, he did the impossible and completed the mission. He eliminated the most powerful hero from in front of All For One's face. I wasn't expecting them to introduce the full backstory of Star and Stripe and immediately proceed to show us how Shigaraki one-shots her in the middle of the day, but they did it because they needed to show how powerful Shigaraki has gone at this point. At the moment, we've seen Deku and the rest of Class 1A do some really crazy shit, but Shigaraki is still overpowered to the point that he can still come up against the number one hero in the world and go at her and beat her. But the twist in this episode, I was not expecting. Shigaraki made a fatal mistake. Actually, All For One made a fatal mistake. He's conjoined to Shigaraki at the molecular level and at the quirk level, so everything that he does affects both of them. And of course, All For One was not gonna waste the opportunity to have Shigaraki touch her face and extract that quirk from her. What he didn't know is that Star and Stripe is the absolute boss bitch of sabotage, because the one rule that he was not expecting is for New Order to start combating the quirks inside his body. This moment was heartbreaking as hell because yes, she did sacrifice her body in order to help Class 1A give a little bit more time in order to fight Shigaraki one-on-one. -on -one. Just seeing her backstory and seeing her say goodbye to her friends, cabrón, it me partió el corazón in every single way and form. I also appreciate how they showed us Shigaraki's struggle from the inside, not only with All for One, but within himself as well. He has to retreat because otherwise New Order is going to cannibalize all of the quirks that he has in his body. Oh 
Overall, this episode did an amazing job at setting up the stakes for this season. Not only did it showcase how Shigaraki is super overpowered at this point, but they also introduced the biggest and most powerful hero and eliminated her in a two episode time span to show us how dire the circumstances are for our heroes. Total anarchy and destruction the entire way through the animation quality was pristine, and I cannot wait to see how Deku and Class 1A respond and train in order to have that weak time span between when Shigaraki is able to basically fight again and be able to witness how that training pays off if they do face Shigaraki in this final boss fight. So far, the two episodes were a 10 out of 10 in my book. Let me know what you thought about them in the comments down below.